I've always considered myself an ordinary person, living a fairly routine life in a bustling city. My name is Steve, and I work as a graphic designer for a small but thriving advertising agency. The city, with its endless skyscrapers and busy streets, is both my workplace and my home. Despite the constant hustle, I've always found solace in the little things, like my evening walks. There's a particular park I frequent, nestled right in the heart of the city. It's my escape from the chaos, a place where I can breathe and gather my thoughts. This park, with its sprawling green lawns and serene lake, feels like a different world. I'm usually there just before sunset, when the sky turns a brilliant orange and the city slows down. It's during these walks that I do my best thinking, unwinding from the day's stress. On this particular evening, the park seemed more peaceful than usual. The leaves rustled gently in the breeze, and the distant sound of laughter filled the air. I remember feeling particularly content, grateful for these moments of tranquility. As I walked down my favorite path, lined with old oak trees. I noticed someone sitting on a bench. He was a stranger, but there was something intriguing about him. This chance encounter, I would soon realize, was the beginning of a story I could never have imagined. A story that would turn my ordinary world upside down and leave me questioning everything I knew. He had a friendly face with a warm smile that seemed to light up his eyes. I nodded as I walked past, but to my surprise, he struck up a conversation. Beautiful evening, isn't it? He said, his voice friendly and inviting. I paused, returning the pleasantries, feeling a sense of ease in his company. There was an immediate sense of connection, as if he had been waiting for someone just like me to come along. His gaze was intense, yet not unwelcoming as though he was genuinely interested in every word I said. It was strange, this feeling of being so quickly understood by a complete stranger. He leaned in slightly as we spoke, hanging onto my every word, nodding and smiling. We talked about mundane things at first, the weather, the park, the city. Then he mentioned his love for movies, his eyes sparkling with passion. I watch them all the time, he said his enthusiasm infectious. Curious, I asked about the types of movies he enjoyed. He started off innocently enough, talking about thrillers and suspense films. But as the conversation deepened, his taste in movies took a darker turn. He spoke of horror films, not just any, but the most disturbing and graphic ones. I felt a chill run down my spine, but I brushed it off as just a unique preference. He then shared his dream of getting into movie making, perhaps as a writer or director. But not just any movies, he said, a strange glint in his eye. I want to make horror films extremely lifelike ones. The way he emphasized lifelike sent a shiver through me. He continued, elaborating on his dissatisfaction with current horror cinema. He described how these films failed to capture the essence of true fear their reliance on obvious fake blood and overacting. In his view, the actors never seemed genuinely terrified, the scenes too staged and predictable. It was as if he longed for something more visceral, more unsettling in its realism. This longing for authenticity and horror, the way he spoke about it, was deeply disconcerting. His critique wasn't just of the filmmaking. It felt like a critique of the very nature of fear itself. It was then that I began to really notice him, to see the details I had missed before. His boots were caked in mud, as if he had come from somewhere off the beaten path. And under his fingernails, there was something dark, possibly dried blood. My initial impression of him as a simple, movie-loving stranger began to rapidly unravel. The friendly demeanor he projected was now overshadowed by these unnerving details. His clothes, though seemingly ordinary at first glance, appeared worn and slightly disheveled. His hair, unkempt, added to the growing sense of unease that was taking hold of me. I realized then that this was not just a harmless eccentric. 
there was something more ominous about him. The smile that had once seemed warm now appeared forced, almost sinister in its context. As these observations flooded my mind, a cold sense of fear started to replace the initial curiosity. Panic started to set in, but I tried to keep my composure to not let on that I was afraid. He continued talking about his movie ideas, each one more horrific than the last. I felt trapped in the conversation, my heart racing with fear. Then he asked the question that made my blood run cold. Have you ever thought about being in movies? At that moment, a chilling realization hit me. Why would this stranger, with his unsettling fascination for lifelike and upsetting horror, be asking me about being in movies? His question wasn't just odd. It felt like a veiled threat, a sinister implication hidden in plain sight. I suddenly felt exposed, vulnerable, as if I had unwittingly become part of his dark fantasy. The park, once a haven, now felt isolating, a place far removed from help or safety. The stranger's eyes, once friendly, now bore into me with an intensity that screamed danger. I knew I had to get out of there to escape this unsettling situation. I nodded and smiled, making excuses about needing to leave. As I walked away, I tried to memorize every detail of his face, his clothes, and his voice. Once I was at a safe distance, I contacted the police, my hands trembling as I dialed. I gave them every detail, hoping it would help them find him, or at least warn others. But days turned into weeks, and there was no news, no updates, nothing. I searched online and followed the news, but it was as if he had vanished into thin air. During my search, I stumbled upon something disturbing. There was a large underground community dedicated to creating homemade, lifelike horror movies. These films were not the usual indie horror flicks. They were something far more sinister the deeper I dug, the more I realized that some members took their obsession to terrifying extremes. There were rumors, unconfirmed reports, of people going missing, of films that were too real. This discovery sent a wave of dread through me, amplifying my fears about the stranger. To this day, I wonder who he was, what his intentions were, and if I had narrowly escaped a nightmare the unanswered questions linger in my mind, a haunting reminder of that eerie encounter.